Distributed consensus is extremely important to build a robust distributed system because it is very common for a bunch of nodes having a need to agree upon a common value like a leader node, some secret value, some meta information or just a value of a key in a database. In this video, we understand why it is impossible to achieve consensus in a distributed system where communication channel is unreliable through a real world analogy called the two generals problem. But before we move forward, I'd like to talk to you about a course on system design that I've been running for over a year now. The course is a cohort based course, which means I won't be rambling a solution and it will not be a monologue. Instead, a small focused group of 50-60 engineers every cohort will be brainstorming systems and designing it together. This way, we build a solid system and learn from each other's experiences. The course to date is enrolled by 600 plus engineers spanning 9 cohorts and 10 countries. Engineers from companies like Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Slack, Facebook, Tesla, Yelp, Flipkart, Dream11 and many 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 more have taken this course and have some wonderful things to say. The coolest part about the course is the depth we go into and the breadth we cover. We cover topics ranging from real-time text communication for Slack to designing our own toy load balancer to Greek buzzes live text commentary to doing impressions counting at scale for any advertisement business. In all, we would cover roughly 28 questions and the detailed curriculum uh, split week by week can be found on the course page which is linked in the description down below. So if you are looking to learn system design from the first principles, you will love this course. I have two offerings for you. The first one is the live cohort based course which you see on the left side and the second one is the recorded course which you can see on the right side. The live cohort based course happens every two months and it will go on for eight weeks while the recorded course contains the recordings from one of the past cohorts as is. If you are in a hurry and want to binge learn system design, I would highly recommend you going for the recorded one. Otherwise, the live cohort is where you can participate and discuss things live with me and the entire cohort and amplify your learnings. The decision is totally up to you. The course details, prerequisites, testimonials can be found on the course page arpitbhairi.me slash masterclass and I would highly recommend you to check that out. I put the link of uh, the course in the description down below. So if you are interested to learn system design, go for it. Check out the link in the description down below and I hope to see you in my next cohort. Thanks. So reaching consensus is extremely important in a distributed network. For example, if we have a database cluster in which one node thinks the value of price is $1,000 while the second node thinks the value of price is $2,000. Now when someone queries the database, Depending on where the request goes in, the user would see either 1000 or 2000. But it's an inconsistent view. That is where what we need is a distributed database to come to a consensus that they agree that the value of price is 2000 or maybe 1000 depending on what the true value is. They have to come to an agreement. Right? So this is the classic problem of reaching distributed consensus. Right? Now, Reaching a consensus is extremely simple when there are no failures. That's the easiest system to build. Right? But it becomes impossible, and I'm using a really strong word, it becomes impossible to solve a distributed consensus if the communication links are unreliable. We'll talk about it through an analogy. Let's say the problem, like the real world analogy for that is called as a two generals problem. Right? So here, the situation is something like this. You have two militaries which are led or you have two armies led by two different generals A and B. Both of the generals wants to attack the common territory sitting in between. Right? Now, what do we want to like what the state is that if like to for them to acquire the territory, both of them have to attack simultaneously. If A attacks and B attacks, then the territory is theirs. If only one of them attacks while the other does not, then they lose the battle, right? which means that both the generals needs to coordinate on when to attack because they have to ensure that they attack simultaneously. This is the classic two generals problem. Now, why is this challenging? Because for them to coordinate the attack, they have to send messenger. And this messenger, when it goes from A to B or B to A, that messenger might be captured which means that in a distributed system, the message can be lost due to unreliable network. Right? This 
is the challenge of this particular situation. And now this is the classic two generals problem that we need to address. Now this would help us understand why we are using that strong word which says that it is impossible to attain a consensus when the network is unreliable. Now when messages are not lost, let's assume that the network is reliable which means that if A sends message to B, the message is guaranteed to be delivered. If, mess if the communication channels are reliable, this is the easiest problem. Because now what would happen is, let's say A initiates a message, sends to B that, hey, we would attack at 6 a.m. tomorrow. Are you okay? B would send, yes, it works for me. A would send, okay. B would send, okay. And both of them would coordinate, like would, uh, both of them have coordinated to attack at 6 a.m. tomorrow morning. And this is extremely simple. This is extremely consistent as well. Right? Because no messages were lost, both of them knew that A proposed a timing, B said it works for them, A acknowledged Kia, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow at 6, B said done. Right? Because this is not A commanding B that we will attack tomorrow, A is asking B if we would want to attack at 6. Right? That's why we need 4 steps to build this consensus. Right? Attack at 6, okay. B sends works, A sends OK, B sends OK and this is what the transaction is all about. Right? Now here it is two generals. If we would want to extend this to n general problem, it's just that with you, if you continue to do this, you would eventually form a consensus in your distributed network. Right? Because it was, it was easy purely because the fact that messages were not lost during like because the communication channel is reliable. Right. Okay. Now things starts now. Where do where does this fit into real world? Like obviously it's too general problem. Real world, it, it does not fit in. I'll give a very practical example of that. Let's say we are having a distributed database in which when we commit or when we write uh, a value, it gets written at two places. Right. Which means that if you would want to commit into a distributed database where you have two nodes. And when you are committing, you are you have to commit at both the places. If one of them says, I don't want to commit, you have to abort and you have to tell the other one to abort as well. This is the, this, the two generals problem, you can very well see it fitting in, in this scheme of things. So just to reiterate, you have a distributed database. You want to commit a transaction. You have to commit at both the nodes. If one of the nodes says abort, you have to abort the one at the other node as well. And everything has to be reliable, right? And consistent. So this is extremely, like this is how your two generals problem fit into your, your, your distributed system, right? Okay. So either everybody commits or everybody aborts. Now, okay. Now let's see in the context of two generals problem, what happens when messages are lost, right? So when A sent a message to B, okay, hey, let's attack at 6, are you okay? Are you okay with the timing? B sent okay, but this message never reached A, right? So B sent a message that never reached A. Now what would happen? According to B, it is attacking at 6, but because A never received a message from B, A would not attack. So what does this mean? They have not reached a consensus, either yes or no. Right. So if with this thing, if B attacks and A does not, they would lose the battle. Right. So as soon as messages, as soon as you start to assume that network is unreliable, you can see how difficult it gets to build a consensus in a distributed system. Right. Okay. Just to extend to that situation, let's say A sent a message to B saying, let's attack at six tomorrow. B said, yes. Right. A sent, okay. Now, because A sent OK to B, now what does this mean? That if this message is received by B, right? if this message is received by B, B is now willing to attack because B received acknowledgement from A. But is A sure that the message is definitely received by B? No, because it would be waiting for an acknowledgement from B that, hey, yes, I did receive your OK message. Like, I did receive your acknowledgement. Now you can very clearly see how you need an acknowledgement for an acknowledgement for an acknowledgement for an acknowledgement purely because 
we assume that the network is unreliable right and this is an infinitely long process because you are always because your network is unreliable you cannot guarantee it right because you cannot guarantee it because you cannot because you are not able to guarantee the delivery of the message you are always constantly waiting for an acknowledgement to come back and there is no way for the other node to find out this is the classic two generals problem in which everyone stuck no one's able to build a consensus it looks such a simple problem but it's extremely tricky extremely tricky right so now if you were at the generals place how would you have solved this problem it, to be honest this is an impossible problem to solve Like this, you cannot solve it unless you use some heuristics. One of the most common heuristics that we see that, let's say we think that like when before we plant our armies on at A spot and the B spot, we say that A by default attacks, right? So A by default attacks, and what it would do is it would it can send a lot of messages to B because it is possible that one message might get lost. Two messages might get lost, three might get lost, but ten might not, fifteen might not. Or uh, if A sends fifteen messages, one of them will go through. One of them will go through is what A is relying on. So A is trying to increase its probability of messages going through to B. And when A definitely attacks, and if one of the message is through to B, then B would also attack, right? Because A's decision is already made. right so now you actually you actually reduce the problem from two generals problem because one was already that i definitely going to attack no matter what and it just increased its probability to do it right so these are some heuristics that you can apply but this is still not a concrete solution and that's why this is an this is an impossible problem to solve such a simple problem yet impossible because network is unreliable right and in case if let's say a sent 50 messages to b and if none of them went through which means that b never received it so a would attack and b would not gone you lose the battle right okay but we know that distributed consensus is possible isn't it like the world works on distributed systems and we know that distributed consensus is possible but how this is where we never assume 100% unreliability of a network we always assume we always make some probabilistic assumption about the loss of messages for example one in two messages would be lost it's a very high probability but i'm just giving it as an example so if you can assume if you assume that a network is unreliable only to a certain degree let's say 0.5 what you can do is you instead of sending one message you'll send two or three messages again that same example that we took the last time we send a lot of messages expecting one of them to go through right that same thing we do over here also just that's why in any distributed system we never assume 100% failure of network we always assume that network that delivery that a communication channel is reliable to a certain degree we cannot we never say that it's 100% unreliable right so we assume that we make our system tolerant for a certain degree of failures right and that's the strategy and which is why you always apply retry whenever you are making a network call we applying retries is our way to ensure that even if due to any reason the server is not responding network is unreliable to after two or three or four chances your request will go through that's why it is always you are always told to have retries while you are making a network call this is one of the reasons why because we cannot assume 100% unreliability we to assume partial reliable partial unreliability in the network and our retry mechanism is a kind of heuristic that we have applied to get over this fact but in general two generals problem is impossible to achieve uh, like it is impossible to achieve distributed consensus in a two generals problem when you assume unreliability of your network if you assume partial unreliability of your network it is very easily solvable with retries right but other than that you cannot solve that problem and this is the beauty of distributed system such a simple thing impossible to solve with heuristics you are able to navigate your situation and which is why we apply retries in distributed systems wherever possible because you cannot assume your network to be reliable and that's it that's it for this video because i wanted 
to cover this distributed consensus starting from the fact that it's impossible to attain and why we are even placing retries where, where, where like we assume a lot of things in general but we should not right and that's it that's it for this video if you guys like this video give this video a thumbs up if you guys like the channel give this channel a sub i post three in-depth engineering videos every week and i'll see you in the next one thanks a ton